guys. My name's Aaron Murray. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be talking to you today about Coca Lumberjack, which is a nifty little framework I uh, stumbled across a couple of, uh, one or two months ago, um, when I was researching how to do more effective logging. So I've been, I've been I work at a, a company called Heirloom. We do a lot of enterprise apps, so we needed an, an enterprise level logging framework. So instead of just using NSLog or DLog, we wanted something a bit more robust. So uh, I thought I'd come up today and give you a little chat about what I found. Also gonna do a bit of a demo about just a really basic implementation so you see how easy it is to implement it in, in your apps and just go over some of the pros and cons and um, give you uh, a bit of information so you can start your own journey if you wanna be that into it. And that's not working. No, it's a bit rude. Oh, there we go. So, a little about me. Um, senior iOS dude at Airloom. So we're a mo uh, an enterprise mobile group uh, based out of Melbourne, and we do a whole bunch of enterprise-related products. Uh, I'm also a guest writer for Mobile Tutes Plus and Tech Pro, uh, two very cool websites. If you're looking for um, any type of tutorials uh, on development, um, check them out. And that's my email and GitHub address there. So the problem is that NSLog sucks. Um, it's slow, you can't access logs in the fields. If you just use NSLog, um, you'll have the output going to the Xcode console. Apple's not very happy about that, so if you have too much NSLogging happening in the field, they won't even let your app through. Um, and it's all or nothing. There is no concept of errors, only showing errors or warnings or infos or verboses. It's just on or off. Not very helpful. So. The solution that I've come across is Coca Lumberjack, so it's obviously an open source framework you can um, fork or pod or anything from, uh, from GitHub. And it logs to the system logger, it logs to the console, it logs to files as well, um, all by default. So literally you just have to put in a couple of lines to set it up and it does that automatically. Um, it all allows for different logging levels, so error, warning, info, verbose, and it's much faster, so you can actually do asynchronous logging using GCD if you want to. Um, I found that that can be a bit of a mixed blessing because it is faster, and if you've got a log lot of stuff logging, um, especially if you've got a lot of, say, you know, SQL queries writing to an SQLite database or what have you, uh, NSLog can slow it up, so it has an advantage in that regard. But uh, asynchronous logging can be a bit tricky because you'll be stepping through, and this is literally the only problem I found with Coca Lumberjack. You can be stepping through, and you step past the point where it's a message is supposed to pop up, and it doesn't pop up until a few lines later. So that's the only downside. But everything, but it is faster. So going to go through a demo. I'm going to try and go through a demo. Not having a lot of luck here. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, thanks guys. <laughs> it's really been that long since I've used Keynote, far out. All right, here we are. So I've um, become a recent convert to Coca Pods. I absolutely love it. I hated it for a while and then decided, well, it's this big thing, so I'll, everyone else seems to be using it. I might as well get into it. And yeah, it just makes life so much easier. So Coca Lumberjack is available as a pod. You can just install it that way, or you can get it as a zip or your sub module, however you want to do it. So I'll take you through the, the, a few things to look at first up. So there's a few important files to look at. ddlog is the main one that you need to import. Um, usually you chuck that in your prefix file. You've got ASL and TTY logger, which are logged to the Xcode console and console.app. And then you've got um, file logger, which obviously, as the name sounds, allows you to log to the file. So you just need to import these somewhere. You don't need to do anything special. Just import them once, and it's a, it's a once-off. There's also an abstract database logger, which I haven't actually looked into. Um, there's a lot of documentation on the GitHub page. So if you've got any more questions, uh, questions after this, you can go there and see a whole bunch of really cool stuff. So let's write an app. So we've just got an app here. What I'm going to demonstrate is, I said, how to set up logging and also how to set up dynamic logging, uh, um, turning logging on and off um, in the app. So if you've got a, a user in the field, for instance, and they're going, they're going around and the app isn't behaving exactly as they want it to, you don't want it logging all the time. You probably don't want it logging all the time. What would be really useful to be able to do is ask the user all over the phone, hey, can you go to settings? Can you flick this little switch? And, um, and it'll turn logging on for them. So that's what we're going to do here. So the best place to input it is the app delegate. I'm just going to import. What do we import? That's right. DDASL. 
the file and DDTTL logger. Fantastic. Let's just make sure. Whoa. Let's yeah, and DD log is in the prefix. Fantastic. So to set it up, all you need to do is DD log add logger. So the concept is you add these loggers and a logger is responsible for logging it to something, whether that be the file, the console, Xcode, um, or something else. You can build your own, your own loggers that write to the database or JSON payload or anything. It's that extensible. So in this instance, we're just going to be very basic. So we're going to do uh, the ASL logger. ASL logger and TTY logger are shared instances. So you literally just do that. Nice and easy. Instance. instance, there we are. Cool. And that's all I have to do to enable logging at a very fu fundamental level. Then if we want to add file logging as well, there is no shared instance for the file logger. File logger equals dd file logger alloc init. Just do alloc init. And then with the file logger, there's a few useful properties. You can set the maximum file size. You can set the rolling frequency. You can set the maximum amount of log files as well. So obviously you don't want you know tens of hundreds of 50 megabyte log files um, caching up on the user device. So file logger, what do we do? Set the rolling frequency. Let's set it to 24 hours. 24. Logger. Manager, let's set that to maximum number of log files. Let's set that just one. One's more than enough. Um, the log files for um, Coca Lumberjack are stored in the caches folder of your iPhone simulator. Do you have a link to the iPhone simulator in your finder? iPhone simulator folder? No. It's okay. I don't know where that is off. No, that's right. I don't know where it is off the top of my head. But if you know where your iPhone simulator is on you know, the iPhone or your computer, you can find them there. And then like we have with DD ASL or TTY, all we need to do is add the file logger. And that's working, that's all we have to do. So we are now set up and ready to use DD log in our app. Import DD log, actually no, I've already done that, Never mind. So the first time you use Coca Lumberjack, it'll be really cool, you'll go in, you'll, be, you'll start to use You'll want to use um, a log, so DD log, and there are all sorts of different ones. There's an error war um, level, there's an info warning, there's a verbose warning, um, and a warning level. So there's all there's all these different levels that you can go. So if you want a warning, for instance, you just go see warning, you know, warning, and it works exactly the same as D log or NS log. So if you wanted to output a specific format, so a format string. <laughs> oh, it'd be help if I put a comma in there. All right. So you'll think everything's going well, and then you'll get these annoying red flags, and it says, "I don't know what you mean by DD log level," which confuses you because DD log level doesn't appear anyway. Um, the trick is you have to actually specify what level you want by default. You can set that anywhere. You can set that in the H or an M. Basically, you need to set it in an area that's going to be seen in your entire application. So, the way you do that, you, know, you, put, you can put this in the prefix if you like, but it'll, I'll tell you why you don't do that in a second. So, dd log level equals log level, and there's your different levels. So, if you have it on um, on error, it'll only show errors. If you show it on, if you put it on warnings, it'll show errors and warnings. If you put it on, you know, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna show everything. We're gonna go verbose. So it's gonna show us absolutely everything. And there we are. Like that. Format string, we don't have a title, so that's gonna be null. So that's as simple, it's as simple as that to put a log level in. So let's do, crash my app button. DD log error, log warning, DD log 
info and dd log verse verse. Okay, so at the moment it's set to everything, but if we just set it to one, only the warning shows up. Error. Verbose. Everything, and I'm going to get rid of these because they're confusing me. So that's it. That's pretty much Coca Lumberjack. Yes. Sorry. Can you change the format of what it comes out so that you know what level you're looking at? Sorry. Um, not that I'm, I'm sure you can. Um, like, there's. I'll show you some resources in a minute. You can go and read up. There's. We're just covering the tip of the iceberg here. Um, there is a thing called log formatter, which I think you can put in your own predefined formats. Um, these DD logs are just macros in in DD logs, so you could you know, effectively write your own that outputs the current level, the method name, all that all that jazz. So, yes, but not in the default implementation. Yeah. So that's all very well and good, but the, one of the things that I really liked about this was the ability to turn it on and off as you like. So switch changed. So all you have to do is I've declared um, obviously this DD log level and it does have to be called DD log level. As long as it's a, it's a static int declared anywhere in your application, it's not a problem. The static is only, only going to appear in that M file. Sorry? Because of, like that symbol is only going to appear in that M file, you have to put that Static in every end file that you want no, to use. No, 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 no. As long as it's accessible everywhere. Yeah. Whatever. Log level equals self dot log switch dot shits on log level, and then we can go. Simple as that. So that is pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show you. As I said, there's a lot more resources to look at. Keynote, there we are. Never using Keynote again. Oh God, yep, there we go. Um, so if you want to know more, check out the GitHub. Um, these links will go up online as well, I assume, Sean. Uh, at online, some point, right? or you could just go <laughs> or you could just Google Coca Lumberjack, and it's like the first link. Um, and Bart Jacobs has written a good starter guide there as well, if you want uh, a recap. Yes. Uh, any good spots? So you said don't put the variable somewhere. Any gotchas? And Oh, well, it depends on how complex you want to do. So I've, at this point, I haven't played around too much with the, you know, run during the app's execution where the user can switch it on and off. I haven't played a lot with that. I've just done preprocessor macros in the prefix file. But, yeah, it's really up to you. Experiment. Have fun with it. Any other questions? We had issues with... Um so one of the most common questions on the Frank mailing list is people that use Coco Lumberjack. Mm. Frank also uses Coco Lumberjack. You end up with probable kind of diamond dependencies. Ah. Have you had any issues now that you're using it with projects that you have? That have used it before. Good question. We um, haven't as of yet, <laughs> but I'm now I'm now worried I will. <laughs> <laughs> but just don't use Frank, Stuart. <laughs> oh, no, there you go. Good. No, um, as of yet, we haven't we haven't come across a framework that also uses Coca Lumberjack, but that's a very so good gotcha. Yeah. GCD web HTTP web server it uses Coca Lumberjack as well. Okay. XML. Okay. XMPP framework. XMPP framework. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Your favourite framework. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you could, the basic thing is don't use your own copy. 
Like if, if something you're yeah. depending on is using like Coco Lumberjack and you want to use Coco Lumberjack, then use Coco Use, Lumberjack. use, use it. There, yeah. Um, we use, at REA, we use Coco Lumberjack to sort of build, build NS log files, the equivalent, save them to disk. When we have crashes, we submit those Lumberjack logs up with the crash report on Hockey App. So you've got all our, all of our crashes come in, all of our crashes. <laughs> <laughs> And we can see where the user has gone up to that point. That's really handy. Just so out of curiosity, there are a few logging frameworks out there. Um, so I remember just talking to Michael, like they wrote their own really powerful one. What other solutions have people come, come up with? Or for other frameworks people have used? You can use ASL log, the underlying mm -hmm. ASL logger of yourself. Like yep. that ASL is built into iOS, mm -hmm. um, yeah, public headers. So I've used that. I've built my own. Like front end to ASL, which is it's roughly similar to Coco Lumberjack. It's not that difficult. Cool. We use NS Logger as well, which I like. NS Logger, heard of, haven't haven't worked with. NS Logger? Hey. So <coughs> we, build, we build our own logger, and it's actually switching on and off logging the module of the NS class. Yep. So that's quite handy sometimes. Yeah. The last based logging. So yeah. Fill out all the invoice side. Yep, uh, Coco Lumberjack can do that as well. Um, haven't had the need to do that yet, um, but yeah, that is that is a very cool feature. Hey. Hi, uh, oh, is there yeah. any log, uh, length limit for the uh, log entry? I mean, uh, for example, you, you, you log a line, and is there any length limit? Like a, a length to the uh, log string, yeah. per se? Not that I've come across. Has anyone else come across a length? Not yet. But try, like, see how long you can get it, and, and let, let us know on the mailing list. I think um, NS Logger can actually log images or something as well. Have you seen that? Yeah. Oh, really? It's kind of cool. I don't know where this one can do that. But... Don't know. We're going to try though. Now that sounds well, really yeah, it cool. Has a, um, it has a rich client, so you can actually filter and browse for all your logs, and it shows the images. Huh. So it sends everything, but you turn on and off what you see in the receiver. Something like that. Yeah. Do you? Um, can you set up your own log levels so you had one? Yes. Like yes, you can set up your own levels. And are they, um, so if I log at um, warning, do I get warning and error? Yes. Like it yeah, it's not, it's not just so the, um, if we, ju yeah, cascades. Oh, yeah, that's cool. So it's not just, um, yeah, so, so basically you know, verbose error, is yeah. everything yeah. and then blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Excellent. Anything else? Great. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.